This week on Bros, Bibles, and Beer. And forgiveness is available only by personal acknowledgement and confession and complete reliance on his grace. Yes. Yes. No. Why are you showing Zach, Jeff? Zach's not even talking. (laughs) He's not even talking. (laughs) Jeff. Everybody give it up for Jeff's last week with us. This is Jeff's last week. Unless God is the God that says, hey, do what I say, not what I do. Because God is who he is and can inspire the things that he can inspire in humans, it means that what was written then can have applications universally and throughout time. Sitting down, God, what do you have for me? Maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't. Maybe you miss it. Yeah. Maybe you're distracted with something that's coming up in the day and you can't get out of your head and you, and you miss it. They might even want to take over the cop. What's a cock pilot? What? Is, what did I, what's that word that you just used? I don't know. What's a cock pilot? <laughs> hey, uh, Mr. Rogers, Google cock pilot. Not Would on you, my computer. No, no. Not on my computer. <laughs> mm-hmm. hey everybody, welcome to Bros, Bibles, and Beer. This is Jeff. It's episode 232. Andy, how's it going? Uh, it's pretty good. I'm pretty sure Zach walked in on us. <laughs> Zach? <laughs> what? Maybe. Speechless. <laughs> Jeff? Super bad. Uh, another Jeff? <laughs> He said, uh uh-huh. said, yes. Uh, I have a healthy marriage. <laughs> but is, is this cool? Is this cool? That- <laughs> probably not. <laughs> it's probably not cool, but it's okay. It, so- nev- it sounded like a very healthy marriage. I've, I've, <laughs> I've never seen Zach pre-show go from his car and walk directly towards my car before we're entering the house i'm like why (laughs) is zach not going to the studio why is he heading towards me and he just had this look of like i don't know what's happening we could talk about other things (laughs) yeah we can anyway uh my wife and i watch super bad so that ties in a little bit it feels like the same thing yeah exactly (laughs) Super bad. All right, uh, listeners and viewers, thank you for tuning in. Uh, this is Bros, Bibles, and Beer. I am Andy. That's Jeff. That's Zach. We like to have serious conversations without taking ourselves too seriously. And we got Mr. Rogers on the ones and zeros. Thanks for helping us out again. Back from the dead. Beautiful day in my Yes. <laughs> beautiful day in If you're loud enough, it'll come through. Okay, we skipped it last time. And we... Can we go to the ever loving listener feedback and comment can we go to the comment section i'm glad you asked oh good (laughs) this is high quality high production we're doing all that we can did you print them out it's like local tv i did what i wasn't sure for some reason that i would have that so I, i printed them out all right, talk to us. Okay, we'll just run through a couple. What are people saying? Once again, appreciate the comments, the likes, the follows, the the subscribes, all those things on the various channels, especially YouTube. And more if and more, you're on Apple Podcasts, you can still rate and review us. Do more that. More and more every day. Yeah, yeah, it's growing. There was a reel we put out uh, with Aslan where you were making the talking about C.S. Lewis. Oh, yeah. And... Um, Aslan's not tame, but he's good. Yeah. Um, and this is an individual that I I don't think I should name, but this was on face ba- face back. If, if they <laughs> face put their back. name publicly, we can say it. Uh, Unless you don't want to say, say the name because this is the second Ke- time Kevin, you've said this. Kevin Davidson, isn't it funny? Period. Fear God. Period. God is love. Period. I'm just saying he put periods after all okay. these. Why don't you love God instead of fear? Because the Bible is written by a gay king. God is not gay. Now you know. Blum, 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 blum. The more you know, the more you know. <laughs> so I have no idea what that means. Let's, yeah. let's just leave that there. Okay. Uh, thanks, listener. Right over the top for me. Over my head. Maybe he's ta- Is he talking about King James? The Bible is written by a gay king. Gay. Is he referring to King, King James of King James Bible lore? Was he supposed to be gay? It wouldn't surprise me. Most of them were just happy. But I don't know. But God isn't gay, so now we know. All right. Uh, and he thinks that King James wrote the Bible. Some okay. people do. There is a 
a decent amount of King James only people where that is the only proper translation. Every other Bible translation is shite. Mm. Well, I like LeBron. Yeah. If only he would write the gospel according to. Well, yeah. He probably has. That's probably what his memoir is going to be called. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what else? Uh, David Brock on Facebook. Uh, on Jesus, we had a, a reel on there on Jesus' death. Poss- if it's un- if Jesus' death was unnecessary, can God just forgive people? He said, "Wasn't Jesus going to die anyway? He was still fully human. His death was paralleled by the OT sacrifices in the law that God established to bring people and Himself back into union. Were those animal sacrifices necessary for God to forgive? Although He said they were." Question mark. An interesting question is what would have happened if Jesus stuck around too long? Was the timing just right for the disciples to become apostles and the church to expand? Jesus' death was inevitable because he's human. So is the question about the type of death or his dying in general. By the way, new listener, and I'm loving it. I'm glad you're loving it. Thanks, dude. Da Aquaman on Instagram. Da Aquaman. Can we trigger God's love? Try my Holy Smokes Grill. Is he selling something? <laughs> no. It sounds awesome, though. No. That I was from the, the Traeger translation. I, know, I, know, I, know. I think again? I know who that is. <laughs> Try my Holy Smokes Grill. He likes he likes smoking beef. I like smoking beef. And then if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, uh, real slash short, uh, D. Millsap. As a mortal parent of mortal children, I can feel what sacrificial love means and see its impact. The God of the Bible knows no such thing. How could he? If he's all-knowing and omnipresent and omnipotent, he could never feel what humans feel because our experiences are dictated by our linear existence and lack of knowledge in the future. That's a... That's something you could just meditate on for a while. Mm. Because we don't have knowledge of the future and God does... God can't truly identify with us. Interesting. Feelings of love types like Storge, I might mispronounce these things, Eros, Philia are unique to us because of that and the sense of loss and heartbreak that accompanies it. God cannot relate to us in that way and attempts to claim he could via his son don't even solve those issues given his foreknowledge. It this- doesn't sound like Dave believes that Jesus was fully... Human and fully and divine. And fully God. Yeah. yeah. If Christ was deity at all, then that completely Fs that all to smithereens as well. So he's really playing on like how much God knows really matters. And he's like holding to that logically consistently. I think there's uh, points though in the New Testament that indicate that Jesus doesn't have complete full foreknowledge of events. Well, I mean, if that and if you if you take the flood story semi-literally... Um, God regrets creating humanity. How could God regret something he knew would happen? It's um, also anthropomorphism, but yeah. Right. Um, that's for the literalists out there to chew on. Um, and then... Chew on that literalist. One more from Dave Millsap um, on the latest episode. Uh, Dr. Becky Kennedy of from episode 231. What was that called? With Carrie? Yeah, with Carrie. Yeah, 231. Uh, Is there a war on men? Dr. Becky Kennedy of Good Inside, I'm assuming that's a book, made an analogy for leading in the home, likening it to a pilot conveying his confidence and direction to the passengers. If he's unsure or unclear about his role, then it creates a sense of insecurity and even fear for those in his jet under his care. It's not that he needs to lord over them, but they are under his direction and his actions need to be purposeful and resolute for the well-being of everyone on board. Otherwise, it creates a desire for passengers to doubt that they'll arrive in the right place or even have a safe landing. And so they try to take whatever control they can to prevent that. They might even want to take over the cock pilot. What's a cock pilot? What? Is, what I, what's that word that you just used? I don't know. What's a cock pilot? <laughs> hey, uh, Mr. Rogers, Google cock pilot. <laughs> Not on my computer. <laughs> Not on my computer. Don't Google that on my computer. It's an OnlyFans subscription. <laughs> nope. Not, nope. What's the matter with you, Jeff? <laughs> Oh, that a brain fart. 
And there was more, but we'll leave it at that. We appreciate all y'alls for listening and subscribing and whatnot. Do that on the YouTubes and your favorite podcast app. Dave, I don't like that analogy because that pilot has no relationship with his uh, passengers. So go Um, find another analogy, bro. Well, they depend on him. Well, you know, you know, there's one time I had a pretty intimate night with my pilot. Your cock pilot? Yeah. In yeah, the, I bet in, you did. In the cockpit. <laughs> in the cockpit. With the cockpit. Uh, the, the comments are awesome, though. Thank you for... Um, and we try to interact with them when we can. And by we, I mean Zach does. And then I just come over and I like like things from my personal account. But if you can catch me <laughs> that it is my personal account, then maybe I'll respond to you. Yeah, I like the uh, analogy of the pilot. Why do you like that? Because uh, you don't have a relationship with your wife? <laughs> no, I think it, it's just an it's just an example of someone who is has charge of something and they don't want to not everybody. not do what they don't they they don't want to convey uh, that they don't have things and so they take control and they you know they take us where we need to go and everybody has confidence in that if they start to back away uh, everybody uh, and there's some hesitancy in their their speech and their tone. All of a sudden, people are like, I don't know if I trust you. And next thing you know, it's chaos. People are freaking out. So, can you take me home? Uh, Mike's Harlow and Abe, can you just drive me home, Tari? No, you didn't have to do that in the Tesla. That thing would drive you home. <coughs> you didn't have to rely on Tanya, the cock pilot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what we're talking about anymore. I lost track of it. <laughs> Um, speaking about what we're talking about, what are we drinking about? First of all, you just poured a little something. What are you What are you sipping on? What are you drinking about, Zach? What, Our, are, you, what are you drinking about? Hourglass by Docent. Docent Do- Brewery, local from San Juan Capistrano. San Juan Capistrano. You know, if you you go in there yeah. at oh. any one given moment, you'll you'll probably run into somebody that at least knows oh, one know, of us. They'll know the bros for sure. That smells like a West Coast IPA. Yeah, it's delightfully clear. Clair- clarity. I was thinking clarity, and I wasn't thinking of somebody named Claire. I swear. Delightfully clear. And then what did you pour me? You poured me some basil. Yeah, some basil hadn. Basil Hayden's and then uh, we'll Same. make. And Same you get a little basil as yep. well, and I'll make my way over to the beech wood, which is what is this one? What is this? Okay, hold on, Jeff. Can we uh, shift to this camera real quick here? We're gonna get a shot of this. This West Coast. This is a beechwood and Firestone Co-lab. West Coast way. A little collab. I like it. Okay. And uh, we'll Mr. That Mr. Rogers is drinking Sprite. He's he wants no booze, no caffeine, and no fun. It can be treacherous pressing buttons and taking notes and whatnot. Um, I don't want to be drunk doing this. No, you don't want to be drunk. He's got That's all his true. faculties about him. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, should we get into it? Let's start eating that meat. I don't That's like the exactly way we want. It's not good. You're you're leading us we're not tonight. Gonna do a, we're not going to do that as a new segment. We're not going to do no, that. I tried it once and now but never we, again. We do have some clips Just that we can... Do you want to go to some clips? We do. Well, we, we're going to talk about biblical... What is a worldview? And is there such a thing as a biblical worldview that gets thrown around a lot? Um, Christians sometimes left of center will criticize that concept, uh, myself included, because... The concept of a biblical worldview? Biblical view. worldview, like, okay, I get it, and I think generally I know what most people mean because of my upbringing, but um, words matter, and I'm, I'm not sure it's as definable as people think, and maybe there'll be some points of uh, disagreement to discuss. Uh, we have a couple of clips we'll get to, but... Oh, there will be disagreement. There will be blood. Jeff, is it true that you're going to drink my milkshake? Sorry, reference. There will be blood. I love that show. Worldview definition. Nope. Tell me if you guys disagree. This okay. is taken from Google. A particular philosophy. Disagree. It's from Google. Oh, sorry. Okay. A particular philosophy of life or conception of the world. Example I have broadened my worldview by experiencing a whole new culture. A worldview is the way you view the world, right? <laughs> Turns out that's basically what good. that just said. And it should be no surprise that everyone has a worldview, whether they know it or not. Any any thoughts? You can't not have a worldview. Everyone view. looks, interprets data through 
their upbringing and everything, even if you don't have it well defined or you don't think about it too much, you're doing it. Well, and that's probably the thing, right? Which is um, ha- how many people have taken time to sit there and go, what shapes my worldview? What are the things that that influence the way that I interpret the same events in, in, that happen in the world to everybody? Um, I, I, I have a way of viewing them. And so what is it that's causing me to view them? Because what's the unspoken implication in that um why are you showing zach jeff zach's not even talking he was taking the drink and i wanted to get a little sponsor <laughs> he's not even talking <laughs> jeff action. everybody give it up for jeff's last week with us this is jeff's last week <laughs> <We've> lo- <laughs> don't, hey don't worry about it mr rogers um, and he does this to every producer he threatens to fire them all yeah every producer gets threatened to be fired i don't know who he was talking right now i just see zach I was drinking aggressively trying to earn a sponsorship by the way I was enjoying the beer, and I think Jeff was picking up on that. You do your job over there. (laughs) You do you, I'll do me. Uh, Yeah, so being being aware of the things that shape and influence your worldview, I think is helpful because maybe in a in a perfect scenario, it helps you carve out or recognize at least where your biases might be. So, for example, if you're someone who sees the world through the eyes of the Padres having a chance to win the World Series, then you should introspectively there's reflect. There's going to be some bias there. You should recognize <laughs> that maybe there's some bias there. If you think it's the Dodgers, well, you're a realist. We're talking about you, Jeff Tan Pants. <laughs> Jeff Tan Pants Pearson. Just on that. Since you're referencing the Padres, oh, they the- went all in, and now they've dumped everybody, and they'll probably have a better season. <laughs> Do they still have Tatis? Yes. Okay, that's the best butt in baseball. I just gotta say, I know it might be not, might not be popular. Every time we see them live, you call him a show pony. Every <laughs> Do- time. <laughs> Do I? <laughs> yes. Sure. Every time we've got yeah. there, you're like, he is a show pony. He's we- got some high hips. Andy and I have talked about it. Yeah. We've talked about it. I, we have the tally sheet. <laughs> Zach said it again. Jeff and I are in the corner. When you say it, we're like, oh, Jeff. Uh, show pony. That's hey, number 17. You missed one. It was 18. Oh, <laughs> game recognizes game. That's all I'm going to say. How about that? <laughs> He's a show pony. <laughs> all right. Um, now, a biblical worldview, this is from BJU Press, uh, a biblical worldview or a Christian worldview Ooh, things are about to get good. is a worldview based on God's unchanging word. Since God is the creator of everything in heaven and earth, he's a standard for truth. Don't read it in that voice. Yeah, that was really lame. Well, I, I read it in the voice that I read it in, and uh, I'll explain it. So... The condescension you hear from me is based on your li- worldview. Is based on my <laughs> exactly. worldview. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Try to say another sentence. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, a biblical worldview, of, and they they say or a Christian worldview. So for them, oh. and I th- I don't think most Christians would disagree necessarily. They would interchange biblical and Christian worldview. And that's what I want to kind of drill down on, or that's what I plan on. Whether we go there or not is fine. We'll just see where this takes us. But it's a a worldview based on God's unchanging word. So they're talking about the Bible. And so, because biblical worldview, but they say it's a Christian worldview. They're, They're saying it's the same thing. And, you know, maybe we'll unpack that later on. And I think... We might uh, focus on the families, similar thing. That's that's a big organization most most uh, Christians know about. Biblical worldview is based on the infallible word of God. When you believe the Bible is entirely true, you allow it to be the foundation of everything you say and do. That means, for instance, you take seriously the mandate in Romans 13 to honor the governing authorities by researching the candidates and issues, making voting a priority. So they're including... Researching candidates' issues as part of a biblical worldview. Maybe, maybe not, but side note, Romans 13 is the one where it's like, Paul seems to be instructing people, hey, the government's there because God put them there. You're subject to them, blah, 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 blah. And it's one that basically Christians left and right, if their person is in office, they'll they'll appeal to Romans 13 to, hey, Christians over there that don't like this guy, Romans 13. And then it flips the other side. It's like, hey, you good Christians, now use Romans 13, even though you hate my guy. 
You make it sound totally bad, but it's not totally bad. Maybe not, but also there's, I think there's a little bit of context on the boots on the ground. The He's riding two people in Rome, the Romans, Roman Christians, the young Christian church in Rome. Uh, how many ways can I say that? Uh, You've only got three words. Put them in all orders. But Rome is top down like the authority. And I think there it's possible there's a little bit of like coded language in there to appease people that were concerned about Roman authority, including people in Roman authority. Like, okay, these Christians, they're Paul's yeah. instructing them to be good. Jesus talked about that too. A little bit. Render unto Caesar. And isn't that just right? paying taxes? Yeah, that is, is paying it, taxes. Render is it Caesar. Just, I mean, it's is just, it just paying taxes. You could look at it like that, but render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. I have heard it said this way, and I like it. What was on the coin was Caesar's image. Mm-hmm. Hey, that's Caesar's image. Give it to Caesar. Who who is God's image? You are. And I, and I think there's some subversive like. Yeah. Yeah, hey, you might have to do this. That's Caesar's deal, but you're more than that. Your your identity is in something uh, beyond that. So I think there's a little sub- subversive poking of the Caesar bear, as it were. Um, but those are bigger topics for another time. Um, so you want to? You guys have any thoughts, or should we should we hit a clip? Oh, I thought we were going to go through the list to determine oh, if yeah, we, we had we ourselves. Had we had a little list. Okay, so uh, well, listener. Oh, get the context of. Oh, maybe that was a part of the clip. No, no, no. Of the the list. The the, the statistics. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna test ourselves, and as you listen and, and watch along, uh, see if you qualify for the biblical worldview. And it, the thing I read from Focus on the Family a few minutes ago is basically they grab this. It's from George Barna. Barna Research Group is a pretty well-known yeah. faith-based uh, research group. And there are seven things that they ask people about for the biblical worldview. Um, all set. All right. This was on my phone, but my phone is now a camera. Here we go. Okay. Here are the seven things. Can I give context yeah. to the percentage of... Remember the 65% or is that something in a, a later article? So, okay, so Pew did research and asked, you know, many, many people. I mean, okay. thousands and thousands of people. Is, I don't know the Pew stuff. Go for okay. it. Okay, and, and they asked, you know, are you Muslim? Are you atheist, agnostic, Jewish? That Like all the religions and Christian... Uh, came up 65% of, and so it was kind of like, wow, 65% of the people around the, as, around, being, as, as Christian. Wait, identify as Christian as or Christian, religious? As Christian. In America? In, in America. Uh, and that's a code for I believe in God. And um, Ish. the um, Arizona cultural Christianity, whatever that you're going to speak, I think about, um, I think at Arizona Christian University, yes, I believe. They went and dug down deeper, um, and that was, okay, of these 65%, we're now going to go and ask them 35 to 40 questions on the biblical worldview and see, you know, are they really Christians? And it came back 6% actually kind of passed their their filter. Not, not that they were really Christians, but if they <laughs> had, a, had a biblical, biblical worldview. worldview. They, well, they they said, yes, I am a Christian. And then they went, okay, we're now going to test you. We're not, I mean, they're not saying that, but they essentially, their intent was to go and say, do you have the biblical worldview? And then they asked questions and of the 65%. Their intent was to judge them and their hearts. Well, just to find out where they're at. Are you a Christian? Let me judge your heart. And that was based off beliefs and behaviors. So I'm going to read these seven and let's do this like a lightning round. We can go back and add more context, <laughs> okay. but just right. for poops and giggles. Let's get to it. You're, it's going to drive you nuts because you're going to want to. Well, I'm talking about myself. I'm going to want a caveat because that's what I do. Is this a yes or no thing? Yes. No. Maybe. Yes, no. Or you could say generally yes or no. That's what he does. See, I just I just ruined it already. Oh, your mileage may vary. So, according to this research, though, three percent of adults 
embrace all seven of these cornerstones for their life. Only 3%, which means 97% do not embrace all, all seven, seven of, of these of these cornerstones for a biblical word worldview. The majority, 80% embrace at least one or more, while 20% reject all seven. Uh, Andy, are you worried? Like, what if we say no to all of them? Well, are we going to hell tonight? Then you're going to be on this couch. I'm going to say, I'm going to say it depends. To how, half of them will be, it depends. Okay, go ahead. All right. One must possess an orthodox biblical understanding of God. What does yes. that mean? This is my answer to most of them. Me too. Okay. Jeff gave a yes. What does that mean? I'll say yes, maybe. Also, what does that mean? Number two, all human beings are sinful by nature and choices have moral considerations and consequences. Yes. 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 The consequences of sin can only be forgiven and eliminated through faith in Jesus Christ, and forgiveness is available only by personal acknowledgement and confession and complete reliance on his grace. Yes. Yes. No. Number four, the entire Bible. I know you want it. You want to ask follow-up questions. You can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> the entire Bible is true, reliable, and relevant, making it the best moral guide for every person in all situations. Yes. Say it one more time. The entire Bible is true, reliable, and relevant, making it the best moral guide for every person in all situations. What do you mean by true? Just give me a yes or no gut reaction. It depends. Okay. I say no. Absolute moral truth. This is number five. Absolute moral truth exists, and those truths are defined by God, described in the Bible, and are unchanging. Yes. Yes. Sometimes. The ultimate... Well, actually, yeah, and it depends. <laughs> yes, and it depends. Number six, the ultimate purpose of human life is to know, love, and serve God with all one's heart, mind, and strength. Yes. 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 Depends on things. Every single one of these depends on things. I know. And number seven, success on earth is best understood as consistent, obedient to God in thoughts, words, and action. Yes. Success on earth? Yes. Success on earth is best understood as consistent obedience to God in thoughts, words, and action. My definition of success, whose definition of success, I guess, is the question. God. So you by based on your definition, which we're not going to unpack, would you say yes or no? Your definition of success. Yes and. Uh yeah. No and. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not only All that, right. but <laughs> All right, so we got to it. So Hey, and l listeners at home, hey, score it. Let us know. How'd you score? Hey, Jeff, were you, were you listening? Uh, Mr. Rogers, were you keeping track? Like where, how many were affirmative yeses for you? I'm just curious. Or I was sleeping for the last couple of months. Okay. Yeah. All Jeff right. was, Jeff Rogers was sleeping. <laughs> He's definitely That's fired. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is your <laughs> every listeners last, the last podcast. You do for less damage, Jeff. less damage sleeping. Yes. <laughs> I have the feeling that every producer we get in here, it's going to be their last. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> a, we'll edit that out. And B, this is their last, their last show. Insert producer's <laughs> name, last show ever. So again, 3% embrace all seven. 3% of Americans surveyed and the majority, 80% embrace one or more of those, which that I fall into there. So I don't know what their threshold would be like. If you get four out of seven affirmative okay. yeses, you're a biblical worldview or what? So when you first sent this over, my reaction as I read through them all was they're trying to take a blend of things that could be taken as very black and white um, or could be very gray. And when they present them, when they present these things that have a lot of gray area in it and it and it comes without context and without definition and what some of these words mean, that's where I get hung up and I'm like, that's where my it depends comes from because I, I don't know what you what you mean by that so maybe i believe what you, the way that you're describing this but maybe i don't out of all of the seven questions yes which stood out to you as the most gray what was the available one there's one that has the word available uh, or actually just read through them quickly 
I'll tell you the ones. Uh, one must pos- pos- possess an orthodox biblical understanding of God. Yes, that's. let's start from the top. Define what you mean by orthodox uh, description of God. So, a biblical understanding of God, this is where, like, a biblical worldview, this is where my quibbles start. It's like... Just tell me what that means first. So, so the God in Jesus that most Christians believe, Jesus is God and human. Um, like, are we talking First John? Calling, calling people to love their neighbors. God is, be like God. God is perfect in that he loves his enemies and he blesses those that persecute them. Be that way. John 1.1. 1, 1. Is that the same? Is, is that the same as the God that calls for the genocide and the murder? And then, hey, by the way, if they have virgins, you can keep those for yourselves. Like, is that the same? Or are we talk? If we would have done homework, we would have looked up what the typical definition of an orthodox view of God is. It's it may uh, the question is maybe like I don't know I've, if there's one, but a lot of Christians they they think the Bible speaks clearly about God's nature and is consistent throughout Scripture. But the two examples I just gave, at least in this humble podcaster's mind, those are not the same. Um, I, unless God is the God that says, "Hey, do what I say, not what I do." Like love your love your enemies, pray you, for those who persecute you. But I'm not gonna. I'll, I'll do it for you that that repent and come to a proper understanding of me. Then I'll love you in a selfific way. But otherwise, you do that. But I'm gonna destroy my enemies if they don't come to repentance. Is God like Sharon Stone in Casino? Stay with me. One of my favorite scenes because it's hila- it's so darkly hilarious. She on a table like this, although it was probably like gla- it was probably glass. Her daughter's in the room. Her daughter's like eight, seven or eight, and she's doing lines of coke. Looks up at her daughter and says, "You should never do this." And so it's the perfect version of like, "Do what I say, not what I do." It's like, but you're kind of setting the example for her. Are you struggling with the age old question? Of, is there a different God of the Old Testament versus New Testament? Uh, no, because I I separate it by, a, I think, humans understanding. It's written from human perspectives, the anthropomorphizing of God. And so you see a progression on humans understanding with God, and it culminates in Christ on the cross, in my opinion. And so I don't believe God is a do, do as I say, not as I do. Oh. I believe God is do as I do. And I believe God loves his enemies and forgives and blesses the good and the bad, sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. But some aspects of God in the Old Testament are depicted otherwise. Humans are interpretations of God. Um, Yes. But that's where I'm at right now. And my, my current... Uh, my current definition of ra- God's wrath that I I'm feel good about is uh, God giving you over to the the consequences of your actions. I, that's the one that like yeah. mm-hmm. I remember Todd Redarmel, former pastor of Mountain View Church. T Rod, T Rod, Todd Rod, God Pod. Um, yeah, when he first introduced that concept, I was like, ah, oh, that that made me pause and it made me think about it, and I. I think I can get on board with that. Uh, at least I can get on board with it more than than anything else in light of a God who loves and and is love. The definition of God, who, uh, a God who is love. And I, I like that you framed it as my current my current definition. That's where I am today. Because as spi- in spite of how dogmatic I might have just sounded, I I I try to have that motif surrounding everything. Like right now, here's where I'm at because it's changed before, then it can change again. Um, I'm taking notes from uh, bro of the podcast slash mentor of the podcast, Art Greco. And I feel like that's w- w- what's the way that he phrases it. He's like, this is what I'm convinced of lately or something to that effect. Yeah. Yeah. Having strong convictions, but you're still open palm like, hey. It might change, but this is change. this is how this is making sense to me these days. So we didn't all the next, all human beings are sinful by nature. That's not con- controversial. The, the consequences of sin can only be forgiven, eliminated through faith in Jesus Christ. Forgiveness is available. Blah, blah, blah. The entire Bible is true, reliable, relevant, making it the best moral guide for every person in all situations. This one was hard for me. 
Why? Uh, the relevancy thing gets gets kind of tricky. So I can I can do some like algebra here and and make some of these things relevant and and try to apply it to today. But I think the problem that happens is when people do literal like a a translation of well for example if you if you took a lot of Leviticus and try to say it's directly relevant for today it'd be weird like we would be living in in weird times you'd be doing weird stuff i you, promise you wouldn't be wearing the shirt you're wearing because no. it's blended fabrics yeah it's blended fabrics and this is clearly a, a cotton poly blend obviously how did you know oh i know my blends your pants too take yeah. them both off yeah <laughs> Remove your sinful clothing, Jeff. You better hope your underwear is pure cotton. Yeah. Pure like the driven snow. You, you guys, can't have cotton with that dirty, dirty polyester. You yeah. guys know way too much about my clothing. <laughs> clothing in general. <laughs> but uh, but that's, what, that's where I'm like, okay. The, the problem that I have with that is that it, it like... It puts this stamp on all of biblical text that all biblical text is identical and it's the same. Now, the flip side argument to that that I wrestle with is there was there was a statement later on that was like the 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 word of God is unchanging. There's also a statement that I've heard a lot, which is the word of God is dynamic, and the dynamic part, the way that I interpret that idea is that yes this was written 2000 plus years ago however because god is who he is and can inspire the things that he can inspire in humans it means that that what was written then can have applications um universally and throughout time that feels like something that that is within god's power to do i like that but what that does is the way this is worded is is to be super clear black and white and what your definition did, which I I'm okay with in spite of like all my, my flaws and not being a very good Christian. It's I'm okay with that because there is, there's a little bit of wiggle room. Hey, let's understand this. Let's dig into this text and see what it means as opposed to like, no, it says it right there. That's equal, equally applicable to your life as it is for their lives back then. And what does it mean now? Like, that's that's the dynamic part for me, which is a trip. Is like it meant that then for them at that time. That's where you get caught up. No, actually, it's it's encouraging to me because I look at it and I go, okay, so then what does it mean for us now mm -hmm. in our context? In our context, and that's the dynamic part of of scripture for me. That's uh, mystical. It's 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 actually like <laughs> slash magical, supernatural that that God can say this can mean. What it needs, maybe this is the right way to put it. This can mean what it needs to mean for for my people throughout time, and it might change. Mm -hmm. Yes, depending, on their, depending yes. on their context. At this time, it, it means this for you, and and I think that that it's probably one of those things. Like if you blur your vision or if you zoom out a little bit, like the general direct, it's all pointed in the same direction. Mm -hmm. yes. So I'm not implying that God, God like changes drastically the the ultimate outcomes or the his intentions for people or anything like that or or his nature even, but I'm saying that like this people needed this to mean this to them in this time so that it could point them in this direction. These people needed it at this time in this way so it could also point them in this direction. Uh, if you're not watching on YouTube, listener, I'm pointing each time in the in, same direction. In directions. Yes. Yeah, in the same direction. Well, I think like a a good father giving direction to his children, he, those those words of wisdom are going to be for all time through all generations, and they get passed down uh, through those generations. And I think like letters to churches back in the day, it's the same thing. And how do we apply it to our lives today? Yeah, because they're still wise words. I uh, from, from I agree. God. I agree a hundred percent. Um, with 90% that they're the, the wise words, like it's important to remember you're, when we're reading Paul's letters, we're reading somebody else's mail and we don't have the other side of the conversation. And so that doesn't mean it only applied to them, Yeah, but it just, the way you, you were describing the Bible in general is why 
I've never been more interested in what the Bible has to say now than when I was like totally dogmatic, yeah. super conservative. Um, the Bible is 100% true all the time or none of it's true. Man, I've never been more interested because you're unpacking so many layers of cultural context and lenses that people might have might have looked through. Biblical scholarship that tries to... Biblical scholarship can't interpret what it means for our lives today, but good biblical scholarship can unpack what the original writer was intending to impose and, and say to his original audience and how they might have received it. I think it, uh, in my best forum, entering into reading scripture with the attitude of God, what do you want me to get out of this? What do you, what do you, what should, what do you want me to glean? What good, insights, what's yeah, knowledge, good right? Perspective, yeah. Like that's, that's me operating at my best. I'm not always, I'm not always operating at that <laughs> in that top form, but, but if that's the intention, then there, there does come into play some sort of, of formula here that we don't know how this works, but at some point the Holy Spirit intervenes and hopefully I'm interpreting and, 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 and am inspired by and reading scripture in a way that's like God is is leveraging this whole moment here to to tell me or to to communicate to me in the things that he wants me to communicate to or to be communicated right and with. the whole the idea of the holy spirit moving in that and that you are pr- completely present <clears throat> which is why i think going back to paul back in that time so little distraction from worldly things and being able to focus and be in that moment and write what he wrote. Oh, because he was in jail? <laughs> the Going back to where you're at, it's like sitting down, God, what do you have for me? Like the Holy Spirit. And it, maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't. Maybe you miss it. Yeah. Maybe you're distracted with something that's coming up in the day and you can't get out of your head and you, Ooh, and you miss it. That's most of the time. Right. And and it happens. Yeah. But ultimately, the the intent of wanting that, desiring that, if we don't even desire that, then we're out of luck. We're going down a rough road. But I think sitting down and having those moments are great. Do you guys do that? Is that part of like? I don't want to imply. I don't uh, you, give. I don't want to give them the wrong impression. I don't sit down and like <laughs> every time I no, read no, no. the Bible, go, Holy Spirit, show me the like impart to me the things I'm supposed to be receiving during the like i'm not that's not a discipline that i have something i could just be listening to worship music but it, there's a verse within that worship music that pulls me into like or a concept i'm just a, completely focused and i'm like there is something there for me today it could just be a general general disposition too like i'm open that you generally have that disposition as you go about your life whether it's reading the bible or not and if it you are reading the Bible, maybe it's not like an intentional, like, dear, sweet baby Jesus, please, please show me exactly what I need for this day. But no, you have a general disposition of like, what can I get out of this? I think it can be the, more practical than... than yeah. I think it's open is synonymous with just being present. Like, I want to be present with God. Yeah. Be no different than being in like a big time meeting in corporate America and like, I need to be present. I need to be on. I need to make sure that I'm hearing everything that needs to be heard so that I'm able to respond. And this goes good. This goes am, well. I am always looking at some other screen during those times. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Just today I pulled up YouTube in the middle of another meeting, but I think Jeff, you must do- not be too meaningful. <laughs> no, trust me. It was talking about legal risk with AI. <laughs> I probably should have been paid more attention. And then they asked me to take care of something at the end. I was like, no, no, so and so should be taken care of. <laughs> He's the guy for you. I don't think I should do that. And they're like, really? And it was a clear moment where I really wasn't listening. And you're a delegation, but you said it with confidence, uh, and everything works. Getting yeah, confidence will get you into back. Just throw the, the clipboard at him. Yeah. Yes, we have lots of clipboards at Google. It's a clipboard heavy culture. <laughs> well, that's how you get into Costco with that's, no membership. Um, I, I I like what you're saying both of you, that there is a disposition which, like, if you are starting your day saying, like, God, I'm open to you showing me um, 
uh, I'm open to your influence today, whatever that looks like. And while you're describing that, it reminded me of this friend of mine that I had um, in college and he passed away a couple of years ago. And this guy, he, he had the craziest stories and it was always involving some like stranger. And, and I remember asking him like, dude, how do you like, where does this come from? How come you have so many of these weird stories? And as you were describing this, I, it like, it just came to me that he, I think he encountered each of these days in a different way than I would have. Like, I think if I would have seen an individual, something I didn't know and something was going on, I think my go-to is like avoidance. I don't want to get mm-hmm. involved. Uh, there's too much going on. And he, that was not his automatic reaction. His automatic reaction was to engage and to see what was going on. As a result, he had so many crazy stories and lots of them were cool. And I think that that guy showed Jesus to a lot of people. Mm. I know that he showed yeah. Jesus to a lot of people, but his mindset was different. And it, and it like you were saying, like it, it can show up in us the way that we choose to open and receive the Bible. It can show up in the way that we... Uh, choose to engage with the world am i here to say okay god i'm gonna uh, to some degree i'm gonna set my agenda aside right Mm -hmm. and uh and see what happens Uh, and with people like what can i do for them like how can i serve them it's uncomfortable sometimes right uncomfortable is that what you said it's super uncomfortable well it is for me okay Maybe it's not for you. You're, I mean, you're, no, you're probably better than me not, at that. I think you are. Uh, like a it's, gen- com- it's comfortable. Yeah, I think you're you're good at that. I think that comes naturally to you. It doesn't to me. I haven't been very good at it over the last few years, but I've been a little too combative with everything. But yes, I do like sitting in front of somebody, listening to their conversation, and then how can I, how can I help? And I don't do that so often too much. Uh, like I said, in the last couple of years, I feel a little guilt and shame. Well, can consider this a wake up call conviction. There we go. And so this is a, this is like, the Holy spirit this manifests is like, yes, through us. There you go. Get that's a perfect, together, that's, Jeff. that's a perfect example of being present, listening and, and responding and hopefully responding well. I think that is one of your superpowers. I think that when you encounter someone and you're able to quickly connect to them, but also that like it's an energizing. That's the key thing. Connect, yeah. Connect. And that, that it's an energizing encounter for you and that person both. Amen. But you feel uncomfortable in sitting, listening, and what, thinking. With strangers, uh, with, uh, yeah, sure. With strangers, oh yeah, with strangers, sh- yeah. Usually, that like the the initial reaction, like when I think about it, I'm like, I would rather not. I would rather. Um, it feels like it, it'll take a lot of effort from me. How about with your wife? Uh, She's sharing, or your whatever it might be. They were sharing a lot earlier. <laughs> uh, <laughs> We'll edit that out. Yeah. Um, no. N- no. 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 The strangers versus um, people you're comfortable with are totally different. Or do we take people for granted that we know we don't really think we just share and they share and I don't even think like ah, there you go I got to say what I got to say. I feel like as I get older this gets worse for me, but I get more picky with the people that I really want to like go to that deeper level with. You're, it's does it make sense? Yeah, yep. you're you're stepping up to eventually. You're gonna be the get off my lawn guy. Right now, you'll let people walk by. Maybe they can have their dog around, but eventually it becomes get off my lawn, unless you actively fight it. But I'm I'm with you. I'm similar. It's it's very uncomfortable. I feel like we, Jeff is you're extroverted. Yeah, I feel like you're a pretty good hybrid. Like you recognize the uncomfort and you know when you need to step into that uncomfort. For me, it's like, oh, this is uncomfortable. I don't know anybody in this situation. 
whether I engage or not, it's not happening unless somebody like yeah. starts that. Where did this where did this conversation begin? I mean, as it related to this. <clears throat> Once upon a time, being present, being open, friend. being present, like praying. I don't know. It praying. started with Holy Spirit. It, um, God, uh, what can this? What can I be open? Reading to? the Scripture and and is the dynamic nature of the of Scripture and how are you open to what God wants to speak to you through Scripture in today's uh, in today? So I just extended beyond just reading the Scripture. Mm -hmm. It is. Do you live a life that starts the day with like, okay, God, well, uh, what what thing, as I encounter the world today, what's the thing that you want me to take away? How do you, who do you want me to be in the middle of this stuff? Jeff Rogers taking advantage of do Andy, it. Andy's birthday cookies, and please do uh, do it. I Dude, want you. You, you got a hanger of like caramel so, off the cookie. Oh, now you uh, just rubbed it in your beard. Yeah, it's <laughs> now that, that beard smells. You good. and the cookie have Why become do we one. Not have this it, on camera. Uh, it's okay. So bring these. Bring it. Just leave them over here. A Andy's birthday is this week. Next week. It's this week. This week is coming up. Today. I think Thursday. Yeah. Um, Listener, you can send us money and beer. Yes. And my, my daughter made these are Kit Kat cookies. Oh. And they're, God so, bless her, they're so good. So everyone bless loves her. hearing people eat Jeff, on podcasts. Jeff, so. just, Jeff Rogers just died of diabetes. <laughs> 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 we don't have to fire him. Diabetes. <laughs> Instant diabetes. All right. Well, okay. should we. Should we play a little bit of one of these clips? Because I'm interested in... Let's do a clip. It, can we define the biblical worldview? Um, I, I'm I'm not confident we can. Like the, the one biblical worldview to rule them all. I don't know if it exists. Nobody's opposed to you playing clips. All right. Although so, there was a lot of opposition to my clips. Producer, last, last hold time. on. Which, which clip do you want him to pull up first? I can disagree. Yeah, okay. what, what do you want to do? What do you want to take to us? Let's, let's hear from Charlie Kirk. He actually was, was at a church local to us, uh, Calvary Chapel South OC, which was Calvary Chapel, Capo Beach, I think. Oh, really? Yeah. I registered three spots thinking maybe somebody will go, and then I didn't go. Yeah. Because it, it was sold out, and you had to sit outside. Man. And so, uh, yeah, just just roll it. There we go. Perfect. This problem right now in American Christianity, let's not fool ourselves, Jeff, are pastors that do not dive into the current events. And better yet, they do not equip their flock to be able to read the news items and understand what does the Bible say about trans surgeries? Yeah. What does the Bible say about immigration? Jeff, can you what does the it? Bible say about... Uh, so right off the bat, I'm like... Okay, for him, a biblical worldview is the Bible speaks about everything with authority. The Bible says nothing about trans surgeries. Hold on. Let me steal man in for a minute. Okay. <laughs> That's a shitty argument <laughs> because there's, you could apply that to Wait, so many things. My argument is shitty? Yeah, it okay, is. Okay, and why? It, it is. Be, the reason it is. You mean the argument you interrupted before I finish? Go ahead. Yeah, because there's so many things that it doesn't. Uh, directly address word for word. However, it can imply certain things. And so we shouldn't use... How about this? I'll, I'll use an example. That man, he was president in 2019. And he had just been recently indicted in New York and he had orange skin... <laughs> Who am I talking about? Well, if I infer correctly. Who am I talking about? Donald Trump. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Jeff, I did not say Donald Trump. What? Where did you get? You get where I'm going. This is a terrible do, example. This is a terrible example. I don't example. think it applies, though. I don't think it applies. Or maybe you were reading in more to what I was saying, but. Yeah, he said transgender. Trans surgery. Or whatever. Transgender Trans surgery. surgery. What does the Bible have to say about that? Can you guys tell me? Yeah, there's man. He created man and woman. The transgender surgery, like cr totally wrecking your body. No, it's but it doesn't. It says so, he created man and woman. He doesn't say you shouldn't alter it after. Like Jesus has Jesus. Okay, talks there's about, another. Jesus actually talks treat your about body eunuchs. As a temple. Jesus Jesus talks about eunuchs, 
some people, there was a movement where eunuchs were, when they encountered Jesus and it's like, I want to give everything up. I don't want to have any distractions. I'm going to cut my junk off. And they did. And Jesus said that this is good for people who get it in that way. This is good. Not many can get it, but those that do, do it. That's well, actually, good, I don't think he says it. It's, I feel like you're conflating. It's not very, a direct. No. It's, it's not a direct. You're filling in the gaps. It's, it's okay. Transition. I don't even think it's indirect. Trans surgery is a bad transition. But but it doesn't. The, the point is like there's there's not a direct thing. Like instantly he what Charlie does and he's doing here is he's taking our current cultural and political culture wars and he's reading them back into the bible and finding what so i don't want to i feel like this is a distraction i don't even want to like get get hung up on this actually maybe it's a good thing to get hung up on can we get can we get a little hung up on it sure okay um because if you if you pick on this thing like this uh, transgenderism or that movement that that it's not a movement that category sickness that thing, Let's not get distracted. that thing is, that's a thing. There are an infinite number of things. However, there are a finite number of things that are mentioned in the Bible. Yeah. So does that mean because a finite number of things are mentioned in the Bible and humanity continues to figure out ways to, to be crazy, that all those new ways that aren't word for word mentioned in the Bible are somehow outside of the realm of God's vision. Not not my argument. I I would say you can you can use the Bible to come to okay, what's the best way we can approach this particular situation? Yeah. Not opposed to that. Okay. However, I do th- think that some people think the Bible speaks authority th- authoritative over everything in a very simple way. Amen. Truly. Yeah. So and I'm just not there, and that's fine. But I want to hear him. He's about to define okay. the biblical worldview. Okay. I don't want to get hung up on a particular issue necessarily. It wasn't just about the particular issue. No, I know. I tried and to zoom it out a little you, bit. You and I, I don't disagree. Like there, I'm saying like again. There are ways. The Bible is not going to speak directly about our specific issues, yeah, but right. you can look to the Bible to find guidance and to to try to navigate and find the best way to I navigate looked it up. The Lord situation. said spending most of your day on YouTube wasn't negative. He didn't even say it in there. He did talk about spending all my time on the YouTubes. So that's what I do. Six all hours right, a day. go ahead, press play. Politicians, what does it say about government? Should we submit to government all the time? Is there ever a right time right. to rebel against government? And so... What I have found is if the church, the flock, are not getting that kind of guidance from their church, they will go get it from a secular authority. And the tragedy of modern Christianity is you have millions of people going to church every single day, not being equipped with a biblical worldview. Now, just a note, you're either getting it from a church, a Christian authority, or you're getting it from a secular authority. I just, I just want to fight with that. I don't, I don't need, know that we need to discuss it, but it's like, um, what's wrong with finding like, Hey, let me look at what this person has to say. They might not be a Christian, but maybe they say something that's true. And maybe I can filter that out, but he's setting up this either or, and this is what he's really good at. And this, this is why he's appealing. Yeah. And I get it. It's like, there's this way and there's this way. There's no in between. Like a like a Douglas McMurray, that guy or Murray. Douglas Murray, him too. Both of them. Oh, you guys are talking <laughs> about Douglas Murray. Douglas Murray. I was talking about Douglas McMurray. That's right. So, most people don't know. I'm surprised you don't know about him. I oh, oh, you don't know about. The, you don't know about the McMurrays. Yeah, McDonald's in Ireland. You can get the McMurray. Yeah, the McMurray. It's great. It's a it's a Big Mac and a McFlurry mixed together. It's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> you should get one with a pint. Yeah, <laughs> it's a combo meal. Yeah, yeah that's right. A little Guinness in there. Oh my gosh, <laughs> the McMurray, <laughs> McMurray, <laughs> Big Mac. Okay, we can keep going. All right. See a biblical worldview. Here we go. The best way I could put it is: it is the color of which you see everything. So once you get a biblical worldview taught by a good pastor like Pastor John, and so on and so forth, um, is 
then you see a news item on CNN, like, well, that doesn't harmonize with my worldview. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're trained then in the ways, so you no longer need the pastor to guide you through every news item. And that kind of training takes time, and you have to spend time in the scriptures, and you have to read the Bible every day, and you have to listen to Christian music, and you have to pray to God, and you develop that. It's a muscle set, really. And for new Christians, it might take a year or two or three or four or five, because you might still be looking at it through the secular old worldview. And sometimes you need to kind of get those muscles back into action, because sometimes you might be falling into kind of a secular way of thinking. But the, 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 so many pastors will then do something even worse than that is they'll take a secular New Age worldview and bring it into the church. Mm -hmm. That's right. So let me give you an example. Yeah, yeah please. Is they'll it. come please. up and they'll say, I don't like Donald Trump because he's not nice. And so then I say, find the word nice anywhere in the Bible, and I will concede the, the point. It's nowhere in the 66 books of the Bible is the word nice. The word nice is from the 1900s. In Latin, it means stupid. And so... No, it really does. It means ignorant, stupid, you wow. know, and like, you know, oh, that person's really nice, you know, like, mean that and how it metamorphosized okay. into what we, you know, mean now. Now you're supposed to be called to be kind, wow. loving, compassion, compassionate, long-suffering, mm -hmm. truthful. All those things are correct. Okay, pause But they, they will say that, you know, I... I so I don't want to get hung up on Trump or not Trump, but he did say he, Christians that don't like Trump, he's not nice, and he tried to make the biblical argument that that doesn't matter. And he just describes things like patient, kind, long-suffering. He's, he's using words that are described in the Bible that most people that say Trump is not nice, that's what they mean. He's not those things. So he doesn't, even, he doesn't even make his own point. But regardless, don't get hung up on that he kind of said the biblical worldview is the biblical worldview. That was his argument. He didn't define it. Did you guys notice that? Like I, there was no, like it's to him. It's like, there is a big one biblical worldview or there is a secular worldview. That's the way he framed it. So I'm still confused. What is the biblical worldview? Well, he's, he's using the nice comment as that's, what the secular world will do. Well, he's not nice. And it's like, that's, he's saying that's Christians great. don't like Trump because he's not nice. The, the idea of, of identifying the biblical worldview is he making assumptions being at a church and understand, and we all have the understanding that we all have a biblical worldview. That's kind of my point is like the biblical worldview is that we all know that there's a biblical worldview. Like you're you're making my point. We're looking I'm, through. I'm legit frustrated. Like, what is the biblical? What is the one biblical worldview to rule them all? From Charlie, it's like the, there's a biblical worldview, and the biblical worldview is the biblical worldview, as opposed to the secular Which worldview. Which is a isn't that not a lens of I'm I'm taking the spirit of of Jesus Christ, the Bible, the words, and I am looking at whatever it might be, how I act around total strangers, how I act around my family, how it, it sh there should be consistency. That would be the biblical worldview that you, you are would... doing a better job than he is. Yeah, but it would be my understanding that everybody, it, it would be, people would come to the conclusion that we all understand what the biblical worldview is. And it is what I just stated. We're seeing everything through the eyes of of God. But that so that's where I would quibble. Uh you but, had me up into eyes of God. Um so I'm letting my main flow right now, you yeah, guys. You are. Oh my I just gosh. decided to let it go. It's Speaking glory. of Aslan. Yeah, get a shot of this, Jeff. Look at this action. Oh my gosh. It's incredible. I chose the wrong time to leave that emo cover band. <laughs> <laughs> Not an actual joke. Not an actual joke. I did leave an email cover band. Eyes of God. The problem... The, That's not what the, the band name was, Jeff. The problem that I hear <laughs> you having is, regardless of whether you're not talking about biblical worldviews, to define a thing by use, by saying the name of the thing is is bad form. I, and I think most people just assume. Charlie, Charlie is a really smart guy. I think yeah. he, he is... I would never want... He would crush me in any debate over anything. 
Um, well, most, most people. Yes, but <laughs> most people would would crush me. Is that no, what you're saying? Most yeah, people would get crushed you, by Jeff Come Charlie Kirk. Kirk. Jeff, you're hurting my feeling. And Je- and Charlie Kirk and, and we probably agree on lots of things, but I think I, I agree with you right now which is to say like hey be more specific in your definition don't you you can't define a thing by using its name in the definition so be more specific yeah and i propose like could we shift it can we start the movement like what is the christ-like worldview see the world live in the world with a christ-like worldview because i don't think those are uh, things are the same why well for instance most Christians believe in an actual entity known as the devil or Satan. Yeah. Does the Bible have a consistent view of Satan throughout all of its pages? Is that your criteria that the Bible has to have a consistent view throughout for you to believe the thing? No, but you, you just changed the argument. My, my thing is like, is there a biblical view of Satan that's consistent? Cause for for there to be a biblical view of anything, it mi- must mean that the Bible speaks consistently and with clarity on the topic. Why? Because I said so. <laughs> well, that's a good I'm not, argument. I'm not being. I'm I'm not being. No, it's a, it's a good question. I'm trying to take it on their terms. Like Charlie speaks with very um, absolute a- authoritative it, absolutes, yeah. and so. And that's how most Christians think. And this is not a dig. It's just an observation. Like they're, And for some purposes, we need simplicity. We need the in or out. But... Something, some things are black and white. Some does, things are not. Does the Bible speak with authority, black and white, about the devil? And if you guys don't have a strong opinion, that's fine. Because I could tell you mine. Um, well... Y- yes. The correct yes and no. yes and yes and no. I mean, the, yes and for no. For me, the correct answer was no. Thank you, well, Mr. It's Rogers. Yes, it's yes and no. There are some things yes and some things no. And if you st- if you study it for my, I've read a few books on it. I'm not a scholar. I'm I'm a bro scholar. This is take this with copious amounts of salt, grains Brawler. of salt. Brawler. He hasn't been even bro been scholar. To, Brawler. Brawler. He hasn't like even that. been to Bible school, you guys. He doesn't even know about Bible school. But <laughs> there is the idea of a personified version of Satan opposed to God's will develops over time in the Old Testament. It gets more clarity in the New Testament. And our idea of Satan actually gets more solidified after the canon of the Bible. This is not to say the Bible doesn't is bad and you shouldn't l- listen to it. It's just it it develops over time because so does the concept of how God employs grace throughout the Bible. So Absolutely. My, so that's my point, which Ab- is because so so if you're the way that you read the Bible is if it's not consistent throughout and the way it desc- describes a concept, then you're going to be effed. Yeah, I I kind of agree, but it shouldn't be a problem. Well, and it's that's not, why it's not a problem for me. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad we solved that. <laughs> but continue though. But but that comes back to the dynamic nature of of scripture as well as uh the concept that God God um is who he needs to be for his people in that moment and that this is the the, the Bible is doing its best to try to capture those moments. I agree. As they happen. And if you zoom out those the way that God is to his people in those moments is still pointing in, in the same direction. It's still true to his character. It just manifests in different ways. I uh, yeah, I agree mostly. Another example is there's there's no like eternal afterlife of reward or punishment in the Old Testament. Everyone goes to the same place in the Old Testament, Sheol. It's the grave. It's where everyone goes. And that the idea of what the afterlife is develops. The point isn't for me to throw throw the baby Jesus out with the bath bath water. The point is it's, it's, there's no, the point is it's not simple. Like the, the idea of a biblical, what does the Bible have to say about heaven and hell? 
it's not simple. It develops. It develops over time because it was written over time by countless people. I, you, I, you don't even know how to podcast. I, well, I, I'm trying to be dynamic and use were... my arms for the visuals. Stop touching the mic. Listener, he's hitting the mic. Go. He's boxing the mic like Rocky Balboa. Don't like, like Mike Tyson going up against Logan Paul. There's no blocking. There's no block. No God, defense. It's just just punches. Just hard hook after hook after uppercut right into the microphone. I'm excited to see that fight. By the way, dude, I'll pay for that fight. Come over and watch it. Okay. And hey, send an email to brosbalzier at gmail.com. Or you could drop stuff fine. I don't even know this fight. Mike Tyson is going to fight Logan Paul. That's the fight? That's what he's preparing for? Oh Mike Tyson at 58, Logan Paul's 27. No, that's he's going to fight his son, basically. That's why I've seen videos. Dude, like, yes, that's why that's just showing I'm up. Like, Iron Mike looks pretty What's iron What's the biblical right now? view of fighting? What's the biblical view of Mike Tyson fighting? Um, What's the biblical view of I, Mike Tyson's punch out? I, I feel I have a very clear picture. The Bible lays out Satan very clearly. And... and it doesn't the bible doesn't need to mention more than once for me it's like seeing that scary movie and constantine you you, you, you see it's like i go back to freddy uh was it uh freddy krueger yeah um nightmare on elm street yeah and all i had to do was hear those those nails along a wall or just for a moment, just a glimpse, and I'm like, uh, Freddy's coming for you. And that proves three, four, better lock your door. Or lock Five, six, get your crucifix. Seven, eight, gotta stay up late. Nine, ten, sleep again. That's that's so good. So creepy. It. Hey, I don't think I ever saw one hey, all the way through. Fist me. Uh, What's the biblical view of fisting? <laughs> <laughs> it, on, it only took one moment, and that was it. When I just reading that that some some entity I don't like scary movies was so. coming to just steal, kill, and, kill destroy. and destroy my world, my life, my soul. I'm like, I don't need any other instructions than I, that. I get it, and I, I'm not taking that away from you. I'm not saying the devil doesn't exist or there's not an entity that's in opposition to the love of God, but it's just not in the Old Testament in the same way it is in the New. There's a progression of understanding. Lots of things are. But that's the point. The biblical view of Satan, if it's not if it's not consistent all the way through, there is no one biblical view of Satan. But this is like theology 101, though. That's okay. No, it's not. It is. It's 101. It is how do you how to read the Bible. It's how to read the Bible 101. Tell that to Mr. Kirk. Well, damn it, Mr. Kirk. Go to Bible school. I'm not arguing with, with you. I'm just saying people are looking for one view. What's wrong with a Christ-like worldview? I mean... Is he, that better? He wouldn't, he wouldn't be wrong, though. Who like, wouldn't? Char- one one named Charlie Kirk <laughs> would not be wrong if he mentioned one of those things. That that's the problem with we're coming back to the problem with not defining what a biblical worldview. Because nobody can. That's my point. You can't. That is my point. You You're cannot. Right. You can't do it. It can't be done. Can't. I'm not saying throw the Bible I out. I can't. I'm not done. saying the devil doesn't exist. Man. I'm not saying there's not absolute truth. How about this? There is absolute truth. Um, we can't know it absolutely, and there are there are things. Are that you absolutely sure about that? We go in faith. I I will say this: not everything is gray. I agree with that. That's a great. Uh, that's a great, great comment. That's a great, great gray comment. That's nice. Not everything well is gray, done, Jeff. Uh, Wait, can you do that once more with your eyebrow? That's a great, great comment. <laughs> that's that's so good. I wish I had that muscle ability. Some things are black and white, and and um, that's good. Actually, that's good. We need we need some things to be we black need and some white. Bumpers. We need things to be black and white. And some even, things, and even some people in their life, you need the guardrails of like, okay, I can trust the Bible. 
Like the, there's a time yes. and a place for like, I need this to be, I don't need all the nuance. I just need to know that this is what I need. So, well, I that the t- uh, time and place implies that there are other times where I don't need the Bible to be true. I think, I think I, I well, that's the thing. Need- the Bible to be true is like that. That's a can of worms. That's my point is like, this is all a, a giant can of worms. So my point of the Christ, like, is there a Christ like worldview? Is that more helpful? Because I think, I think large swaths of the American church, how about this? Ha- the Bible is an idol. How about this? I would not disagree with saying it's good for us to have a Christ-like worldview. That do doesn't you, feel controversial to do me. Do you prefer it over biblical worldview? It feels more specific. Um, it's like a subset in my mind. I think it should be the set. You're the set. All right. What's next? What's on tap? Well, you can go to the other clip. Let's do okay. It. Let's, Let's get it. another definition. See if we can get more clarity. It's uh, the other tab with it's our old friend Alyssa Childers. There we go. Oh, nice. With I I can't remember that guy's name. His last name is Piper. He's a doctor. It's not it's not the Piper pastor. Not John Piper. Not John Piper. Not Joan. He's a plumber. Pipe. Laying that pipe. Not that kind of plumber or a biblical worldview. That's Typically, Mike Pence. the progressives will say, oh, well, <laughs> which like one? It. There's all these different denominations, and everybody, nobody, none of the Christians can agree on what is quote unquote biblical. So, what do you, how would you define the biblical worldview? Well, I'm a Colsonite. I studied under Chuck Colson at um, the Colson Center Fellows Program. Say he Colson one more time. I dare program, you. Where he would choose 100 people per year to, uh, I felt to, like he was. Uh, Pass the baton to to teach a biblical worldview how to defend it, and I, that was a blessing. Um, I think Chuck Colson was a prophet of our time. He was God's gift to uh, that generation. I was Pressure, honored though. to spend a little time with him. Chuck Colson taught us that every worldview, whether you're a Buddhist or a Baptist, a Mormon or a Methodist, whether you're an Anglican or an atheist, every worldview answers four basic questions: origin of man, nature of man redemption of man, and responsibility of man. And when I say man, obviously mankind. No disagreement from me. Where do we come from? Are you the product of the primordial soup, or are you a special creation of God? Still waiting for the definition. If you're nothing but the uh, something that rose out of the swamp, then you have no moral significance you different pause, than a dog, Jeff? a pig, a cat, or cow, he, or okay, even a virus. So he's, devi- he's, to, he's defining it right now. So he's giving you the categories that he's he's going to define hopefully he's giving you his interpretations of things well no 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 he gave you the categories he's like here's a biblical w- worldview has to answer basically he's like, it has to answer these four questions yeah and i i don't disagree like okay. y- you're every worldview is answering those questions in various ways yeah not controversial i'm still waiting for Which what means, is the biblical technically, worldview technically biblical is one of every so we're okay <laughs> still right all right. Okay. Let's keep going. Thanks. Thanks, Jeff. We're making you work today for your... You win rather than like COVID virus sprite. if you're nothing but the product of the swamp and the soup. That's a very good question. We need to answer that. Uh, nature of man. Well, if you rose up out of the swamp, you're going to have an argument for the nature of humanity that's very different than if you argue that you're a creation of God. Are you good? Are you evil? Uh, is there such a thing as original sin? So the nature of humanity is a question that every worldview has to answer. Origin of man, nature of man. And then redemption of man. Okay, so if you have a problem, how are you going to solve it? So if you're a Marxist and you believe that you're the product of the primordial soup, you rose up out of the swamp and that there is no such thing as good or evil, you're going to argue that class conflict, whether it be economic or whether it be sociological, you're going to argue that that conflict is going to be the consummation of a power struggle that that ultimately ends in utopia. Still no biblical worldview. That's the solution. That's the redemption of man. The gospel is very different. If you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Okay, there you go. For all have sinned and fallen short That's of one. the glory of God. So the, the, That's the, from uh, the, Bible. the argument from the gospel is very different in terms of fixing the problem than it would be from Marxism or a different worldview. And then finally, at the end of the day, Actually, what's your responsibility? Know what, what are you going to do about it? How are you going to engage in culture Nobody in the does. market square of ideas? How are you going to engage uh, relationally and politically, theologically? 
in the market square to argue for and to defend the best model for human dignity and freedom that's out there, and that is the biblical worldview. I mean, pa- one of the things it. I think yeah. we need to do is... I have no idea what... He just said that is the biblical... He just said his interpretation of things. I don't disagree. Like, how you view the world is going to affect the way you interpret the world. What would satisfy you? Nothing! I know! <laughs> that's the problem! Cause, cause, could, could, cause I give, could I give one that I think it might be sure. satisfying? Sure. No, it will not be satisfying to him. Can I try? Jeff, just to spite you, I'm going to agree with whatever Andy says next. <laughs> okay. Okay, right. you owe me five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Okay. Uh... As he was describing that, like it just struck me, and I feel like this is this is the biblical worldview. Jesus gave it to us. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. He's gonna say, "What does that mean?" No, I I have a general idea of what most people mean by that, and the Bible does say that. I, I think that he said he didn't say any of that. I don't I know he didn't say anything. Okay, but so, okay. so I'm trying to say like, okay, wait, as he was describing that and as he did not answer the question, I think I can answer the question that the most biblical Christ like worldview, that that's what it is. I think Jesus literally tells us here's here's the way to, to view to have a worldview. It is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And intentionally connecting this because the way that you love God is the way that you love others and vice versa. I like it. Um, love others as yourself. And and Jesus like intentionally connects those two. He, he makes sure that they're connected together um, because, because they can't be in, in, in the way that he's communicating. They can't be separated. Meaning you can't love God and shit on other people true and so maybe let's call it divine inspiration i feel like that's that's the answer that i would come to at the end of this uh at this discussion if you ask me what a biblical worldview looks like zach are you accepting of this answer um lightning bolt please not really <laughs> no i mean yes really not really G- generally yeah like it's it's way better than what he said not really generally yeah okay that's are you is that's it con- way- is everything constantly just intention yeah nothing is much. absolute pretty much it's the burden i bear jeff i bear it so okay. that you don't have to Gosh, you're like a teenage Wait, girl. Jesus? <laughs> no, I, I agree. I agree. I, I confess. I was trying to look up a Bible passage, What's, and so I well, what, trailed off. What bugs you about that? No, what, wh- about what you said? Not much. I don't think anything. Thank you. He just, will, he just thinks it's a swell comment. And that's why I think, I think Christians would do better to... I nailed it. I think Christians, the Bible is an idol. And so if... And so they... Their main goal is to defend the Bible from the secular world that is out to destroy the Bible. That's the way that is their worldview that a lot of Christians look through. Why is that bad? Because by definition, if the Bible is perfect, like this, the focus on the family thing, the biblical worldview. I need to get a cookie for this. Okay, get a cookie. Jeff needs a cookie. Maybe I need a cookie. No, I don't have any milk. If I I can't have this without milk. I'm looking at this thing. Do absolute moral truths exist? Yeah. Next one. Is absolute truth defined by the Bible? Did Jesus Christ live a sinless life? Is God the all-powerful, all-knowing creator of the universe? And does he still rule it today? Is salvation a gift from God that cannot be earned? Is Satan real? Does a Christian have a responsibility to share his faith in Christ with other people? Yeah. Is the Bible accurate in all its teachings? Now, what is missing from that list? Transgenderism. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I rest my case. Nailed it. <laughs> Not my point. Uh, thank you, uh, <laughs> listeners. You can vote for me on Spotify and uh, Apple Podcasts. We'll Jesus. be putting it up there. Who's better? Actually, write in Andy McCraw. Yeah, just write me for it. president. <laughs> it's better than any other option that's uh, out there. Oh my gosh! No, no Durkison ha- von Dubelson. That's for right. The right. Libertarian Party. That's right. And all of those. Uh, there's a little less Jesus in those questions. Fucking A. What's missing from the above list I wrote down? 
Maybe you read this. Maybe you cheated, Jeff. That's fine. Zero mention of what it means to live like Jesus. So everyone is so concerned about defending the Bible. What's de-emphasized is like, let's focus on what it means to be a disciple of Christ. And that's why I propose destroy the biblical worldview Enter oh my the, God. the Christ-like worldview. I oh, I feel like you misrepresented this. Gosh, why do you make me have to defend this? Because uh, you don't want to. I know you don't, but that's why it's a good podcast. Because you're gonna steal, man. Do you think that Jesus <laughs> did okay. not? <laughs> Thank I you. Know. For, yes. You, do I, you think that Jesus did not support the idea that moral truths exist? It didn't say him though. Not my point. Wait, what, what? Okay, so let me let you make your point. The biblical worldview is that the Bible is true a hundred percent, and more Christians Christians would want the Ten Commandments to be displayed in the Capitol. In the Capitol, I'll in take the, public the school. And I, how, how about we flip that? No Ten Commandments. Put the Beatitudes in there. Let's get closer to the source of all things that is love, and that's Jesus Christ. I think I think the agape love of Christ, self-sacrificial love, Christians, we need that more than let's defend the Bible and prove it's true. You know what? Let's it's put a the, distraction. Let's put the attitude back in Beatitudes. <clears throat> I don't know what that means, but it sounds like a t-shirt to me. I'm trying. Okay. Think, oh, sorry. So you said that Jesus didn't exist in these things. If you want to refi- if you want to revise that phrase. Then revise it. Or if I if I misinterpreted that. I said that Jesus uh, uh, Jesus there's nothing in there about what it means to be a disciple of Christ. Okay, this right. is my favorite Andy. When right. Andy is sitting at in the courtroom as judge and he's like, I'll give you another chance and if you'd like, like to plead guilty. Said, well, you said something that you actually never said, but I'm gonna do it for the sake of an argument. You know who I'm doing this for? The listener. Because the listener's sitting there being like, um, would someone please say something about this? <laughs> Will some, someone please stop Zach's heresies? Oh, speaking of heresies. And, and that, that needs to be done. Speaking of heresies. I need to be stopped. Look at, can you see this hair? Can you see this hair? Hair, oh I gosh. see. Oh my gosh, I have so much hair, you guys. It's the most hair I've ever had in my life. Okay. Uh, you, say it one more time. How, the relationship of Jesus to these statements. Do those statements make you become a better follower of Jesus? Okay. These cookies are so good. Well done, Gwen. Amen. Thanks for making them for Andy's Quit. birthday. I haven't even eaten one of them because I don't have a glass of milk, and that's the only way that I can eat cookies. Okay. Uh, do absolute moral truths exist? Can I peel beneath the surface of this question? Please do. Because I think that Jesus operated... Uh, throughout new, the new testament in a way that he clearly understood that absolute moral uh moral truth existed the truth, the way the and life. he would and he would engage with humanity call them out against things that where they were violating these moral truths and call them to more and better anyone disagree with that you're making it better you're not doing what they did I I know because I'm better than them. <laughs> but, I agree. Okay, thank you. Uh, this, is, I think this fight is from your experience of growing up, not getting the details and the question. Like, come on. You, you, you had a wake-up call, and you're like, nobody told me the in-betweens and the questions that would be asked. Is absolute, yeah, and these people are continuing it, and this is why deconstruction exists. Okay. Is absolute truth defined by the Bible? Uh, it feels like it's too close to the other one, so let's just say, yes, we kind of covered that in the previous one. Did Jesus Christ live a sinless life? It's what the Bible teaches. I'm okay with that one. I have, n- I have no reason to say he didn't. Yes, we don't have any other evidence that tells us otherwise, right? Uh, is God the all-powerful and all-knowing creator of the universe, and does he r- still rule it today? This is where the biblical worldview fails because most Christians think the Bible says the same thing about that, and it doesn't because when the flood story happens, God regrets creating humanity, and how he could regret creating something if he knew exactly what was going to happen, and then he has second thoughts. 
The Bible is self-contradictory. That's not, that's not what I thought you were going to say. I thought you would react to the concept that God is all-powerful. Yeah, I, I, I question that. I don't. I don't have a hard stance on anything and, and, and God related. The, and the loose and the loose definition of does he still rule it today? So maybe that's. Uh, can we park on this one for a moment? Is that okay? I feel like we're getting into like, does God like, is God actively ordaining all the things versus you not? Say, you say it like that's a bad thing. <laughs> if God is actively ordaining things, then he... Act- no, I mean, like you say, like parking it right now for a moment is a bad thing. Oh, it, it might be, depending on what kind of... Where are we at on time? Hey, right no, on. It, it's okay. So <laughs> so here's... I mean, if you, do you have more oh, clips? Do you see. have more clips? I mean, you can, you can continue to play him. He, the point isn't like... I, okay. I, know gen- okay. I know generally what people mean by biblical, biblical worldview... But these are, he, that guy's a doctor. Like, he's a smart guy. He has degrees and all that stuff. Charlie Kirk, I think, is a brilliant human being that I agree with sometimes and vehemently disagree with other times. Which can be okay, right? Yes. That's, yeah, that is the way we should look at things. There shouldn't be a, like, oh, I don't like this thing this guy said. Therefore, everything he says is garbage. I don't agree with 100% what you say or believe. I don't agree with 100% what you say or believe. I agree with like maybe 30% of what Jeff Rogers says or believes. And we, we, we don't even know that because he doesn't have a mic. He doesn't even have a mic. So how can we even know that? I, but it's I, I'm unknowable. pretty sure I disagree with like 57% of what you might have said if you had a mic. Okay. Right. He's nodding voraciously. It's Which, the people who don't talk that probably know the most. Future potential foreknowledge. I know what you would have said, and I disagree with what you might have would have said. That's how I feel about God. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, Not kidding. Thank God. <laughs> All right. It, um, I like the idea of seeing if there's is there another clip that that we think will be fun to react to, or is it all flavors of the same pudding? Well, those are, there's there's more to that one than the other one, but it's. There's never a the, the biblical worldview. There's an assumption. Basically, people assume the biblical worldview means there's a biblical worldview. So I'm not saying that the Bible doesn't have important things to say, but I am saying people people can't define what a biblical worldview is. And I know I'm quibbling in a way that okay. is super frustrating to certain people. No, no, that's okay. I think I, I think we established that. But so I, so the I, idea is, hey. Uh, Humans, do a better job of defining what you mean when you say biblical worldview. Because right now you're being vague and you're and you're using the word to define the word, which is not good. Go ahead. <laughs> Mission statements. Our church, we have this like the four pillars of our church, like uh, authenticity with self. Legislative, the judicial. <laughs> right, oh. the executive. I'm just a But there... <laughs> up on Capitol Hill. <laughs> but 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 we, when people hear it, it's like, oh, it's, it's like a mission statement. There's nothing like most companies, corporations, churches, we all got mission statements, but there's really... If you asked somebody, can you define it? This is kind of like the biblical worldview. Can you just tell us, you know, what it is? What is it to be authentic, you know, to self, you know, in the church? Um, I don't know if many people can define it, but a biblical worldview, I think the same thing. I don't think, I think ultimately it's like, well, do as Jesus did and see through, you know, the, try and see through those eyes, that lens. I love what you just said jeff and my response is maybe (laughs) do what jesus did sometimes (laughs) no but that's jeff that is infinitely more clarified than what we've heard like charlie kirk said the biblical worldview is that the bible is has a biblical worldview he he spoke in a circle and i encourage christians I blame the Enlightenment. When the Enlightenment happens, it's like, hey, we can explain everything for, through reason. Maybe we don't need God. Thanks a lot, Descartes. 
And, <sighs> and so the Christians rallied, no, we can prove God and we're going to show you. And I think we still have vestigial responses to that, that are try to prove everything and say, no, it's clear because the Bible says it. The Bible is true because the Bible says it. And it's this circular argument that... It's true because it's true. It's true. But yeah, that's what we end up getting to. And so okay. I would like to level up humanity and let's... Is self-sacrificial love the goal? Is loving your neighbor, praying for your persecutor... Like, is that a level above? I argue it is. Let's move to a Christ-like worldview. Yes, we know it from the Bible. We know a lot of things from the Bible. Some And some of them don't equal agape love. So let's level up. Let's be Christians and act like Christians. Let's not be biblicists. Let's not be Bible worshipers. And I, I most no Christian would say they worship the Bible. But all of these things are defending the Bible, and they're not going. They're not going to the heart of what it means to be a disciple of Christ, and that's what I want to encourage people to do. I have never. Oh, I haven't. Man, really, that's a little twisted, though. Dude. I haven't experienced that <clears throat> where there's the idol, yeah, Bible idling Christians. I can only kind of conjure up in my mind the somebody just. They saying, don't know they do it. They just say a verse. That's their response to something. The Bible says. I don't think Bible, but I don't. That, maybe Bible idol. That language is loose. Maybe poor interpretations of the Bible is a better way to, to, to put it. And standing by it at all costs. And if somebody comes against it, you're one of those secularists. That's biblicism. I just spilled a little beer on my knee. That's biblicism. That's biblicism. Uh, but <laughs> you should think about it that beer it, spilling as God actually talking to you for a moment. Oh, yeah. okay. You should take a moment. Is that is that biblical? It might be. You experienced you experience the wrath of God. God allowed you to uh, encounter the errors of your own ways. He removed His protection from you. So what I just said, I want to, I want to encourage people to have a Christ-like worldview and detail that like at least start there that's a little more distilled and when i say that there's still resistance and i would like to encourage the listener to say guess what you can develop a christ-like worldview uh by reading the bible <laughs> i'm not you're you're arguing against nobody <laughs> in this room no <laughs> uh, well how so because you spent an hour and a half against a biblical worldview well no let me say this the general position that you've taken is trying to is trying to poke holes in people who try to take a biblical worldview that doesn't align with the way that you take a big biblical worldview and that's the that's you're making my point the biblical worldview is my interpret interpretation of the bible that's what it means. Nobody will say it, but that's what everyone we've heard. The biblical worldview is this is the way I read the Bible, and therefore the world should should go this way. Right. And I think we can clarify it better. Yes. And we, we get Christ through the Bible, yes. I'm yes. not arguing we don't learn things from the Bible. The Bible is the most important collection of, yeah. of literature in the history of the universe. Yeah. Amen. At least this universe. <sighs> There's multiverses. We talked about that earlier. We already solved that one. Right, Jeff Rogers. Multiverses, yes? Correct. Correct. I'm just... I I love... It, it, I'm you, curious on the pushback when I when I distill it, when I just like, hey, what if we just focus on Christ? There's still a little yeah, but... And that's confusing. We're supposed to be Christians. We're not supposed to be Biblicists or Biblicists. Because the unspoken part of that is... Um, that there's we there's some disregard for other parts of the Bible. The Bible is not equal. The Bible doesn't speak equally about the nature of God. And I think Christians would know that if they would if they would read it carefully. But that's different than disregarding other I'm parts. I'm not disregard Okay. I'm just saying they're not equal. Well, the, a God that calls for genocide is not the same not the same. It's not the same understanding of God. 
Uh, same I'm and, saying I think same and not equal are different things. There's one God. If if we believe that there's one God, yeah. And if there's one God that cares about humanity, this is why I think it's reading the Bible 101 is is it's the core problem of do you struggle with this? Seems like there's a God of the Old Testament and a God of the New Testament. That is a fundamental like theology 101 question. No. I, I just think there's different. The Bible doesn't portray the Bible portrays God from a human understanding throughout, and we see a progression. I'm not. Sa- I'm not saying there's two different gods. Okay. I'm not a. Is it Marcion? I'm not a Marcionite. Freaking Marcy. I'm just saying. <laughs> remember Marcy Playground? Remember that song? Do you remember the sex song? Sex and candy. I smell sex and candy. <coughs> That's weird. Yeah. What does that mean? We all felt uncomfortable when it came on the radio, but the the groove was great. It's such a good pop song. I know. What is the biblical view of sex and candy? This is the this is the one loophole. <laughs> this is the one gap. <laughs> Sorry, God's blind spot. <laughs> you know the Bible never talks about candy, Jeff. Or uh, no, I had I listened to somebody recently who who said we we are so lost as a society as communities within churches that we don't even we can't even see it anymore like we can't see that we're in sin or we're, whatever it might be cuz i'm like they're terrible so i'm okay and there's this relativity thing that's happened and the like a biblical worldview we have we are we are lost in actually living it out because everything around us is just chaos and distraction and we we miss we miss so much in what we could um be encouraging to or and not just destroying you know my brain from watching certain things on television and it's like i just get burned to the core is that new is that new in society? Um, I think it's gotten worse and worse as the years have gone along. It's it in Nero, my in my Nero lifetime was pretty bad. Well, in my in right. my lifetime, it's just gotten worse. And I don't know if it's as you get older, it's harder and harder to push back on those things. I think I, it's hard for I, I don't know. I I, I don't disagree. Seem with like you. a good argument. It feels really bad right now. It's hard. And it's then, hard. And then. <laughs> And then I, I like I think back to other moments in history, and it and it's hard because our perspective is shaped by our experience, right? And so and so, uh, us to try to compare what our life is like like right now versus what life was like in 1943 is difficult. Like to do that comparison because we just we don't have those experiences to draw from versus what like life was like when Nero ruled. Rome like mm-hmm. we don't we don't have those direct comparisons or when the Mongols took over um, and destroyed you know and ruled most of most of the uh, eastern portions of the world so th- the point that I'm trying to make is like I don't want to be unfair to us because we can only judge ourselves against against our own scenarios it's not fair to judge ourselves against others but maybe each generation and each moment in time that we have encounters the same sort of like existential question. Am I, is this the worst that it's ever been? Does it matter if it's the worst it's if, that it's ever been? Um, and well, not, not judging against other people, but just because everybody is, is burnt so much that we can't even see. I mean, many can't even see the, how fried they are because everybody's fried, you know, watching, (laughs) just watching Netflix or YouTube or whatever it might be. But there's this, (laughs) <laughs> sin there there's sin happening i, don't know. I think I, all the time well yeah but i i don't even know i don't know what we're talking about A la- the lack of encouragement just the idea of 
having a biblical worldview, it's hard to have that Christ-like worldview when, when like the world and our flesh and no, the devil subset. are. Con- it's just a constant bombardment. And as this somebody said, he said we're we're hemmed in on all sides, and it's hard to even. It's hard to push back because everybody's talking about the same show or everybody's talking about the same thing that happened and they're all distractions and we're just, we can get lost very easily. And that's just not, I'm not talking about us. I'm talking about the general church community. And so yeah, there's a lot of distractions. Yeah. The point, what I was trying to say is that at, at each moment in time throughout history, humanity has to deal with a version of what you just described. In the 1860s, we encountered civil war within the U.S., and that was the the largest moment of division within U.S. history. If only we had Netflix Arguably. back then to distract us, we probably wouldn't have fought that war. So, so we have a ver- we we have all of our own versions. So, humanity basically is destined to repeat some some slight variation of history. Always, we will always have the thing that we're struggling against, right? And so the question is, is is this version right now worth the reaction that we're having or are we a bunch of wussies and we should really suck it up? Because if we had to deal with what uh, historical generations had to deal with, it would have been way worse. And there's an argument to be said that we've been softened. And so the versions of the struggle that we have today is so much less but but because we don't, we haven't had that muscle exercised we're we're weak and so we fall prey to something that that previous generations would have it, it would have bounced off of them it would have been like water off a duck's back how do you like that analogy eh? that's a good one that's old school duck's backs are really oily jeff in case actually it's for chad it's not for jeff chad, chad if you're not aware the duck back, ha- its feathers contain an oil, which make it buoyant. Oil-based, so, you know, be- just be careful. Oil-based lubricants, they're different. So, do you think this is just an, e- it's an equal time, like, okay, people who went through World War II or went through the No, Great it's Depression. not. We would have it to- way easier. All- the problems of the yeah. church right now are so... They're champagne problems. Like, oh my gosh, this this particular brand of champagne Christian worldview tastes grosser than the one that we had before it in parts of the world there is legit persecution happening in America nope in America it's just like oh other people have different ideas and maybe less people think exactly the same way that we did in the 1950s you you uh, don't think that there's persecute that there's persecution there's ramifications for talking Jesus in the United States. Not really. The largest organization, the public education system, especially in the state of California, which is gigantic and one of the most powerful unions. Yeah. It is the most powerful union in the country. If you say Jesus Christ and you talk about Jesus, you are done. Right. Do you, you want do you want the state to do you want there to be a state like mandated religion? Like talk about Jesus? Like the well, you can actually... That's not what he's arguing, though. I, I'm asking. Like, would that be better if the state said, yes, please talk about Jesus? The state actually made it its will to pull the Bible out of public school and stop, do not, right. we're and not going to have make this an argument. Anymore. That's why the founders moved from England, because they wanted freedom from that. And I, I feel like there's Christians are are moving a little bit towards trying to like, hey, we need to get the government on our side, and like that's a dangerous game. We're talking about the one ring, like Tolkien had it right, man, the ring of power. And I think Christians right now, more than they have in the past, recently, want the government on their side in a way that it's not good. I, I'm not. If this, kid- is, this is specifically regarding being 
Like there is absolute action that would be taken if you talk as about, a teacher. A, yeah, about Jesus. Yeah. Like, can kids form a Christian club? They can. There you go. Is that biblical? It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's freedom. And, and and we do that after school, funny. right? But within no, within funny. the confines of the of the school setting, like people come in and talk about being gay and transgender and wear your flag and all of that. And you can sit, you can talk about Muhammad, you can talk about being Muslim, but if you talk about Christ, you're done. If you were Muslim and you led kids in a Muslim prayer, would that be acceptable? Probably. Can we get verification on that? That feels weird. Like I, I wouldn't want I wouldn't want that double standard to be to be sure. I'm just saying because I'd, because we're in a, a there there's just an assault on Christ. That feels weird. To I think me. I think there there isn't, but there there can be. I'm not saying that doesn't exist, but I think for the most part in America, it's it's tame, and Pete, and maybe it's not going to stay tame. It's I'm not tame saying, because everybody's on eggshells no it's it it's tame because nobody will they won't cross ooh. the government is it tame or is it just surreptitious i love syrup <laughs> i love it <laughs> all right I, this feels like the side <laughs> yeah. let's okay we're not gonna solve it what if we shifted to what are you consuming? I know it's a hard break. That's good. And Jeff, maybe this, maybe what is the I, church? I, I think so. Is, should, is the church under persecution? Maybe this is a, maybe we dive into this. I don't know. Future episode? Yeah, yeah. I like it. Uh, I, don't list, wanna, listeners, I don't want to disagree with what you just said. Listeners, in, uh, if, you, if you're interested in this, then uh, comment. And if you want us to dive into is the church under persecution? Probably in America is the best way to d put it because I think that it's easier to find uh, international versions. But if you want us to talk about that, then put it in the comments. Yeah, and and definitely uh, those seven things we did about the biblical. What was your score? Let us know about how biblical are about you. The bu -bu -bu? How biblical are you? Okay, let's get to what are you consuming. Can I start? No, nope. please. Because I watched the best. Fighting scenes of any movie I've ever seen, and it was also the worst movie I've ever seen. Roadhouse with Jake Gyllenhaal. And, oh, the new one and Conor McGregor. <laughs> oh Wait, my gosh, that's out. It's on. It's on Amazon I Prime. Came across that, and I, and I made Lindsay watch it <laughs> because we'd been watching girl movies, and I was like pissed off for the past like three times that we watched movies i'm like, fine watch this one fine watch this one and i was like listen the next time it's i'm about to unleash braveheart on you girls here because i have no women in the house i'm about to bust out braveheart you're and, about to get biblical on her ass and and so i was like hey roadhouse let's watch roadhouse jake gyllenhaal he looks great he's inspiring he with does his look great. with his body anyway the fight scenes are fantastic. The rest of the movie is such a train wreck with the worst dialogue and plot that I've ever awesome. experienced in my life. I love that Hollywood can it is, still do shit. Listener, it's the worst. But if you want to see some awesome fight scenes, I'll tell you this. Conor McGregor is a joy to watch in this movie. It's his like, acting debut. He's great. Is he really? He's That's so he's fun. He's fun and he's just crazy ass like Irishman and does exactly what he's supposed to do. I so, love it. Now, which yeah, which a, which actor is he portraying? I mean, it's this is a, the remake. Yeah? Oh, I don't uh I don't remember. He is an antagonist. I will just say that. He he is brought in as an antagonist. Okay. I don't want to give away too much. <laughs> it's kind of worth your time. What's their job? Jake Gyllenhaal's Dancing. the Jake Gyllenhaal's the bouncer. Okay, this is the remake of, yeah, of yeah, Patrick yeah. Swayze's Roadhouse. It's loosely. Roadhouse. It's very loosely. Okay. He's the he's the bouncer. And then there is a there is someone who wants to take yeah. real a real estate guy who wants to take over that property. That's yep. Roadhouse too. Yes. Yes, it's the same plot. Yep. Yes, the yep. same, plot. Right. same thing. Too. Yeah, with worse dialogue. Electric boogaloo. But much better fighting scenes. 
slash ridiculous fighting scenes. Okay, so you watched that. Now, you mentioned you were forced to watch girl movies. What was the best girl movie you watched recently? Damsel with Millie Bobby Brown. And it is, which I called it when it was happening. I was like, oh, this is going to happen. And my daughter, my youngest daughter had seen the movie already. And she was like, what? And I called her. I was like, they're going to. And she goes, oh, we'll have to see. And then it happened. So it is. But it was solid. It's solid. It's a uh, medieval fantasy kind of uh, movie. And uh, there's a dragon involved. And there's princesses involved. And there's fire and escape involved. So I'll, that's all I'll say. Excellent. Zach, what are you consuming? Also the Book of Hebrews. <laughs> Still working on that one. <laughs> Slowly. Uh, you watching or Book of Eli again? We we finished The Bear. Oh, you did? Two seasons oh, of The Bear. About that. I, about I hope The Bear is coming out. It came out last summer july or august so i'm hoping it got renewed i don't know if it did or not thank you for reminding me i forgot about it it's the it just a chicago diner drama cook it's incredibly stressful it is intense it's one of the most intense shows i've ever watched besides ozarks it's in- compelling and rich and then we watched um based on o- oscar buzz uh poor things and that um is one of the weirdest and wildest movies I've ever seen. Weirder than Vanilla Sky? Oh, yeah, yeah. Jeff Jeff is nodding his head like, Jeff, you oh, saw okay. That? So there is... A fever dream? I, a disclaimer, because I know we, we supposedly have a Christian podcast, allegedly. <laughs> There's a lot of sex and nudity in this movie. and But it's done in a way... It's not like... It's gratuitous, but it's not because it's clinical. And it's the way I, Jeff could probably describe it better as being a, probably more of a cinephile, cinemaphile than I am. But I, I feel like it's. Cinema it's file sounds like cinema file sounds it's dirty. Erotic. It's not it's erotic. erotic. Not erotic. Jeff says it's not it's erotic. Arousal. It's more like, okay, yeah, they're having sex and they're naked, but this isn't arousing. Yeah. This is a, this is a, a, a woman that, scientific the, the, i don't think there's any spoilers too much a woman kills herself and a a, do, a scientist i didn't know that well you will at the very beginning of the movie uh she's pregnant don't give anything away the baby darth vader is her father darth vader is her darth father vader is her father gosh <laughs> This is why we can't watch movies around here. What would it be like if if you could implant a baby's brain into a full-grown woman who is brought back from the dead? And so this woman has womanly features and feels and baby understanding about everything, including physical, like walks weird, has to relearn how to walk. Oh, it is thing. wild. And I feel like it's a, it's a long, oh. I feel like it's a movie version unpacking what it looks like to <sighs> eat from the tree, the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I thought you were going to say young Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> Ab- Abby, someone, Abby, 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 Abby normal. normal. We got this brain from Abby normal. You brought me an abnormal brain. <laughs> okay. I'm yeah, sorry. And, and, I feel like I disappointed you. You done? Uh, it's not good? disappointing. It's just I was just trying to like really just like embrace my truth in this segment. And, uh, you know. Okay. Uh, Oppenheimer. It wasn't, it wasn't Christ-like enough, so I didn't accept it. Jeff, you've you seen Oppenheimer. Yes. And uh, what did you think? It was great. Okay. I thought, yeah. it was, I thought it was, I thought they could have done a little more editing. Of the three hours. Oh. Uh, th- did not appreciate three hours. Jeff does not agree with Jeff. Uh, we, have, we got some Jeff on Jeff crime. That's right. And then, for the first time ever, I don't know how, uh, my wife and I sat and watched Super Bad. The best movie oh that's ever been created. <laughs> and my wife was like, uh, who, who told us to watch this? I'm like, our oldest son, who yeah. had, was told by his boss, uh, you got to watch Super Bad. And and then we're watching. It was like, that is not... Yeah, McLovin. <laughs> that is... Uh, 
It's, now the nudity in that is more erotic than yes. there's probably less nudity in super bad than poor things. But the nudity in super bad is gratuitous and erotic. I don't think there's any, uh, there's no, no nudity in there. He's sucking on a nipple. No, no. Yeah. No. no. Different movie. Yep. Yeah. What, right what did you watch? Wait, was that, <laughs> porn, was that Pornhub? <laughs> No, it wasn't. No, super bad. There's not a boob scene. There's not a boob scene. There's nope. not. Nope. What's the other frat boy movie? Probably American Mario. Pie. No, <laughs> way way back. You've got to be more specific. I'm thinking of a Will. It's a Will Ferrell one. Old school. Uh, it is old school. I think there, yeah, yeah. Maybe school. there's boobs. The, in that? Un, the uncensored version, probably. I feel there's, like there's no nudity in super bad. I feel like there's a breastfeeding reenactment in. And I was associating with Superbad. It is old school. Yeah. It wasn't Pornhub. No. <laughs> there is a boob in Superbad. There is. But it's not. It's when they go to the convenience store. Is it a Christ-like boob? So it's okay? Hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when... <laughs> I'm sorry, listener. I apologize. This is the point where I apologize for the podcast. Jeff, I'm glad that you saw Super Bad because Christians is way better than Oppenheimer. It was hilarious. It is way more meaningful than Oppenheimer. And my wife goes, I just, this movie, I'm like, obviously, this is a guy movie. I mean, like, I don't even know the brain cells of men. And I'm like, and some of the things we still talk about it, dude, you know, late 40s, early 50s. I think I had. We talk stupid. I cried tears of. There are no adults. La- I cried tears of laughter in that movie. I laughed so hard. Also, when she said, "I want you so hard," <laughs> <laughs> that's part of the. That's when I laughed. Also, uh, I'm glad that you saw that, uh, Zach. Changed you my life. you said you were no, consuming. Heard, yeah, no, sure. I already did. Oh, we did. Uh, Jeff Rogers, what are you consuming? Anything? Nothing. I drank it all. Oh, he drank it all. <laughs> he consumed all, Sprite. He consumed some Sprite. Sprite. Any show, book, uh, movie recommendation show off book the top movie. of your head? Well, Dune Part 2. Dune, Dune two. Part 2. Dune Part 2. For sure. Jeff Rogers says Dune Part 2, but you saw Dune Part 2 at I did. IMAX with yeah. your daughter, right? Yep. Okay, that's two. I really enjoyed it. Very Hold cinematic. On. Dune Part 2. All right. There we go. Right. Let's get uh, out of here. Is it time to wrap it? Let's yeah. do it. Okay. For Zach, Jeff. I thought we were trying to wrap it. Oh, oh nice. Jeff Rogers. Beatboxing. I am Andy. This is Bros Bibles and Beer. You can get at us on all the socials at Bros Bibles Beer. You can email us Bros Bibles Beer at gmail.com. Who is God's children? And uh, we love the comments, but please like and subscribe. And if you do. Shut up, Zach. Only one thing. We should have had that clip a lot earlier. It would have we'll been that out. useful. Uh, if you only do one thing, share this podcast with one other person this week that you think might enjoy it. And uh, double that- exclamation. <laughs> <laughs> that helps put a little bit of wind in our sails and uh and we love being able to uh see those new subscribers grow so thank you very much grace i love Peace. you guys cheers clink clink all right we did it we podcasted put your gloves on man i so regret this whole conversation I so regret this whole conversation.